Hi there, I'm Kim McMahon. I'm the Director of Marketing at CNCF. And today, Caitlin and I are gonna share how Cloud Native touches your everyday life in ways you probably didn't even realize. Hi, I'm excited to speak with you guys today. I'm Caitlin Raymer. I'm the Business Development Manager at CNCF. Are you guys ready to walk through the six things that you should know? Well, we're excited. We have a great lineup of topics for you today. Um, in our time, we'll cover the, the six things that you should know about how Cloud Native touch your life, touches your life every day. We'll begin with introductions of yours truly, uh, share Cloud Native stories, discuss CNCF open source projects. We'll highlight our end user community where, these real, where the real stories come from, and we'll highlight training and certifications available for Cloud Native today. We'll close with a little bit about CNCF and how you can get more involved in the community. Kim, I'll pass it to, over to you to kick us off today. Well, thank you, Caitlin. So a little bit about me and keeping with our theme of the six things you should know about Cloud Native, we thought we'd share three fun facts about ourselves that you probably didn't know. And I do have to be honest, actually, Caitlin thought that this would be a good idea. <laughs> and I'm doing it because she's told me to. So <laughs> here we are, a little bit about me that you may not have known. When I'm not working, I'm skiing or hiking love being in the outdoors and I live in the Colorado mountains so it's really easy to do. I absolutely despise cilantro and if you follow me on any of my social networks most of my posts are about dogs. <laughs> Caitlin? That's awesome. Three fun facts is always a great way to begin. Um, my three fun facts, I'm Caitlin Raymer, as I mentioned business development manager for CNCF. Um, I love tennis, baking, and snowboarding being a Colorado native. Um, and in a past life, I was a fashion designer. You can see from my decor in the back. Um, and my favorite color is orange. Great. Orange is a great color. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I don't know if it's because I work in technology, but I tend to look at things in my everyday life and think about how that technology is enabling that. So Caitlin and I are gonna run through a few examples of cloud native technology in your life. Caitlin. Thank you, Kim. So our first example that's powered by cloud native um, comes from Bose. Imagine on planes or trains at the gym and during downtime at home, you don't, you don't go anywhere without your Bose headphones. They provide the soundtrack to your life. Um, with Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies, Bose is equipped to connect all of its customers to new products and experiences. Bose has offered connected products for more than five years, and as that demand grew, the company decided to embrace microservices architecture and adopt Kubernetes for scaled IoT platform as a service running on AWS. The primary goal, according to cloud architecture manager Dylan O'Mahony, if a product group releases a new connected product, we want to be all we want to already be well ahead of being able to handle whatever scale that they're going to throw at us. So the platform launched in production in 2017, serving over 3 million connected products from the get-go. Now it's possible for a brand new service to be deployed from concept through coding and deployment all the way to reduction, including hardening and security testing in less than two and a half weeks. In other words, like get ready to connect and queue up the music. <laughs> Cue up the music, or as I have my Bose headphones on, I am queuing up the webinar or the presentation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about AutoTrader, and you all may be familiar with them. They are a powerful search engine for car selling and buying. They run on Kubernetes via Google Cloud, and by moving the Kubernetes, they improved their security, agility, and resource utilization up to 75%. Uh, so that sure looks like it helped somebody find the perfect vehicle for that black lab. <laughs> Caitlin? Oh, that's perfect. Wow. So another story um, that I'd like to share, third one, comes from Adidas, who's a little near and dear to my heart, being from my fashion background. Um, but this story showcases how Cloud Native powers the things that we do every day. Um, and maybe not every day, but specifically Black Friday. So imagine Black Friday, there's a pair of Adidas running shoes you've got your eye on. The checkout is seamless, your shoes arrive, and the next thing you know, you're running your first 10K. Or in my case, probably a 3K. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really that seamless experience might not have been possible in recent years 
as it was a struggle for Adidas developers to access development tools. Um, and they quote, it felt like being an artist with your hands tied behind your back and you're supposed to paint something, according to Daniel, Senior Director of Platform Engineering. So this Adidas working with Giant Swarm uh, got 100% of its e-commerce site running on a Kubernetes platform within six months, just in time for their cyber week. Uh, the load time for the e-commerce site was reduced by half. Releases went from every four to six weeks to three to four times a day. Uh, with 4,000 pods, 200 nodes, and 80,000 builds per month, Adidas is now running 40% of its most critical impactful system on its cloud native platform. Now shoppers can get their Adidas fix on Black Friday. And like we said, every day, it's a great story. That is a great story. Thank you, Caitlin. So we're going to talk about iPhones and how about that new iPhone? Are you ready to get your upgrades on the very first day they're available? Well, thanks to Kubernetes, T-Mobile is ready to do that for you. In 2015, it took T-Mobile seven months to get new code to production. They adopted Pivotal Cloud Foundry in 2016 and took the time to production down the less than a day, but they still needed an orchestrator and Kubernetes via Pivotal's PKS offering was the answer. By the iPhone launch in 2018, the beginning of the peak retail season for T-Mobile, a small amount of production traffic was running on Kubernetes and soon the company was able to do 95% of their deployments in daytime with zero impact. And for development teams, getting a new database went from five days to five seconds. That sounds like a lot of productivity. So when it's time for another <laughs> iPhone launch, T-Mobile will be ready and you know that Kubernetes is behind that running it. I know, it kind of makes me want to switch from my <laughs> current provider to T-Mobile just because they are powered by Kubernetes. There you go. <laughs> Great. Well, our final story comes from uh, Square. I bet you guys didn't know they were powered by Cloud Native because I didn't until we did this story. Uh, but again, think like bucket list concerts, vacations on remote islands. You, you're living your best life and you're sharing it with your friends. So when it comes time to pay your share of the bar call tab or you take and you take out your phone and you open their cash app and instantly transfer the money. Um, so for millions, from taxi drivers to market vendors to big businesses, Square has made getting paid by credit card companies so much easier since it's lost, since it launched um, its mobile app in 2010. So four years ago, the company branched out into peer-to-peer -peer transactions via its cash app. After some steady growth, the app rocketed into popularity in 2016, reaching millions of users just over a few months and landing at the top of the app store's most popular downloads. Um, this large monolith of a few hundred thousand lines of code was built on the assumption of one single MySQL database and wasn't designed to scale. Uh, so as you can see, to solve this long-term problem, uh, Square turned to Vitess, uh, the open source database clustering system for horizontal scaling of MySQL. Uh, the first shard split with Vitess took place in November 2017, uh, and there was less than half a second of downtime. So it was not user visible. Great. <laughs> Nowadays, mm -hmm. the company regularly does 10 shard splits a week. As one Square engineer says, the test does provide you with essentially near unlimited scale. So another round of margaritas, Kim. <laughs> yes. Cash app on me. <laughs> as soon as we're done today. So Caitlin, did you know, so Vitesse is one of our, the CNCS graduated projects. Did you know that that originated out of YouTube? I did not. Well, hey. there you go. Yeah. I got all kinds of fun facts stuck away in my head. <laughs> exactly. So that was a great journey through cloud native technology in our life. Um, we showed you just a couple of them here, but we have many case studies on our website, cncf.io. So if you're looking to see how people are using cloud native projects in their, in their everyday lives and their end user case studies, check out our website. The next question is, what are the open source projects that are powering this and how does this all work? So I'm going to introduce you. I just mentioned Cloud Native Computing Foundation that Caitlin and I are both work that we both work for. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with us. We are a nonprofit open source software foundation, part of the Linux Foundation. And our goal is the adoption of cloud native technologies by supporting an ecosystem of open source vendor neutral projects and making these innovations accessible to everyone. We host nine graduated projects, 15 incubating projects. And you may have heard of some of our graduated projects. They're all over there on the left-hand side of the slide. 
Kubernetes, mm -hmm. Prometheus, Envoy, Core DNS, ContainerD, FluentD, Jaeger, Vitesse, and our newest graduated project, Tuff. Next slide, and what does it mean to be a graduated project? They, well, graduated projects have re re reached the level of maturity where they're being adopted by the masses and are in use in production and have crossed the chasm. Graduated projects receive the highest level of support from CNCF. This includes things like training and certification development, as well as specialized marketing activities to help drive education and adoption so maintainers can do what they do best, and that is to develop code. So Caitlin, I think you're gonna talk about projects and SIGs. Yeah, so there are many ways for you guys to get involved in our projects now that you know a little bit about them. Um, so let's get started. Uh, there are many places to begin, and so for the deep t details, you can click on the link that's provided in this slide, um, and it'll take you to the, our GitHub. Um, but my tip is if you're just getting started to join a documentation SIG, and SIG stands for Special Interest Group. Um, this helps you get familiar with the project, uh, understand how they operate, and it's just a great place to meet other contributors. So you can grow from there. Um, Kubernetes has over 50 SIGs, so if you need help, you can connect with your team, our team member, Ehor, whose information is also listed here, um, and really talk more deeply about your interests, and he can help guide you specifically on the Kubernetes portion. But hop in that uh, GitHub guide and you know, rock it to success. <laughs> <laughs> our next area, um, outside of just projects that everyone can get involved in, is to join a CNCF Technical Oversight Committee Working Group or a, a TOC SIG. Uh, these are much more broad in scope, meaning that they cover more than just one project and are focused on solving, solving challenges in a cloud native way across these focus areas. So they'll dive in deep into security or CI or networking um, and serverless, and each one has a different group of different bodies involved. Um, so click on each one of these links, they're interactive. Um, so it'll take you to each one. and. Um, like it said, all the meeting notes and emails, you can join right there and really jump in and get involved. Everyone's really friendly. That's just Excellent. a couple ways to get started. Um, so we'll transition to the third thing that you need to know about Cloud Native. Um, really, that some people didn't realize that there's an entire community dedicated to end users who are working with projects to power their companies every day. So the examples that we shared earlier um, are just a few of the organizations that are involved in this group. Um, before we get started, we'll jump in to define what really the Cloud Native Computing Foundation defines as an end user. Uh, end users use Cloud Native technologies internally, but do not sell those Cloud Native services or products externally. So you can think of organizations like Nordstrom or the New York Times, Bloomberg or eBay or types of companies that are true end users. Um, a little bit about the structure. So the end user community is really an important part of the whole Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, it's made up of the true users of the projects. Their role is to communi communicate feedback and requirements directly to CNCF, as well as project maintainers. Um, the CNCF governing board is focused on marketing, funding decisions, and really the strategic vision of the foundation. And separately, the Technical Oversight Committee or the TOC in the middle is focused on determining which projects get inducted into the foundation and really executing on the technical vision of the foundation as a whole. So all of these bodies within CNCF work together to better our projects and the ecosystem. Excuse me. Um, what's even more exciting is that having these groups work together isn't just a theory, it's actually in progress and working today. So as you can see, the end user community has reached critical mass and has grown from three organizations in 2016 to 141 now um, and is just across a wide variety of industries. It's become the largest end user community of any open source foundation or standards body today. So we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to further enable end users uh, to get involved in our projects, CNCF aims to help them more easily navigate the ecosystem, recruit top talent, as these projects get adopted by the masses and adopt the open source technologies successfully in their environments and beyond. And the reason we do this is because this is a quote directly from one of our 
end users is that it's not an option to not do open source. Really that if we don't get involved in cloud native and take the lead, we'll fall behind our competitors. And we really wanna enable that to not happen. Keep everybody on time. Um, so as we learned from this previous slide, it's really important to be active and involved uh, with end users sharing their requirements and opinions about CNCF's projects, as well as vendors getting involved in building new solutions and contributing to more projects. Cloud Native will be adopted even more successfully than it is today. Um, we're, we're really only just getting started. Um, on this slide, as you can see, we have four end user organizations getting involved in the technical oversight committee. So they're thoughts and opinions will be shared widely within the group. Um, they'll help actually make the decisions of which projects get inducted into the foundation. And now we have five, rep five represented on our governing board. So these end user organizations are having a real impact and there's absolutely room to grow. And they are so important to CNCF, Caitlin, in that they are providing us uh, the requirements that in, directly into the projects for to be considered for future development. Exactly. Um, they are they are a loud voice and so we really appreciate them getting involved. They get a lot of benefits by joining CNCF too and that's able to show that they are an open source organization. That's one of the top things that we hear about. So yes. Yes. We're so. very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as uh, you know as adoption grows and users grow, um, the fourth thing we really think is important uh, to share about Cloud Native is uh, that there's training and certifica certification and it's abundant that's everywhere. Um, so CNCF and the Linux Foundation have multiple courses uh, for projects and the free introduction to Kubernetes course is on edX. Uh, you can take some courses and brush up on your skills for Kubernetes certification as an administrator or an application developer. Uh, we also offer Kubernetes Fundamental Course Foundation and Administration. Um, there's even Prometheus and Fluent D and Container Fundamentals. So it's a wide variety of offerings to really um, get organizations more involved uh, and have your team trained uh, to manage all of this. I wanted to share that in addition to doing your own training or having that involved in your organization, um, companies that have three or more people receive the CKA uh, can submit an application to become what's called a Kubernetes certified service provider. So this is for organizations that are already have deep experience in helping companies adopt Kubernetes. They usually are providing consulting services, um, offering support, professional services, and or training. Um, this is just really important to know for two reasons. One, um, if your colleagues have certification, your organization become this level of KCSP, um, and it's just great to showcase uh, that and also can provide a lead source for your organization. Second, uh, if you need help with Kubernetes or that environment, you can come look and find uh, a partner here, a trusted partner to work with. And this is just the big list of all of the providers today. We have 135, so you guys can hop on our landscape. That's in the link here on the presentation. Check that out. Uh, lastly, more along the lines, along the lines of training again, um, in addition to the consulting help, we have partners that can assist with uh, in-person training locally in your area. Uh, they've all gone through the rigorous certification process um, once they've been vetted as a KCSP to then offer their uh, training to you as well. So this is important. Again, if your organization is offering Kubernetes assistance and training, you can apply to be featured as a certified training partner. Um, secondarily, if your company is looking for specialized training resources, your team can come here and choose a KCSP um, or go through and certify your individuals through the CKA and CKAB themselves. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll give it to you. Excellent. So uh, how about I get to my slide? There we go. So we are now covered cloud native in your life, open source cloud native projects, end users and the value to the open source ecosystem, as well as training and certification options. So we're almost there. The fifth thing you need to know about cloud native is who is CNCF. So you kind of look at the path from virtualization to cloud native starting back in the early 2000s with Sun Microsystems. There's definitely a history and an evolution 
of the cloud leading us to where we currently are today with cloud native. So when you think about cloud native computing, it's taken this open source software stack. It breaks those applications up into microservices. So we're moving from the monolith into the microservices. You package each part of that in their own container. And then you open orchestrate those containers for resource utilization. Um, and on the next slide, we, we have worked with the community to create this clearly defined, uh, agreed upon definition of what cloud native is. So they run or they empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in whatever environment they want by using containers, service meshes, and microservices. Organizations can create systems that are resilient, manageable, and observable, combined with autom automation. Engineers can make changes frequently and develop and test applications faster. And cloud native enables uh, these, all these applications to run in either the public, private, and hybrid cloud. So this is vendor neutrality. This is um, having developers being able to implement changes into their code faster so that we can see code updates faster. This is a CICD process so that you can ensure that your applications are secure and back up. So all of that kind of brings us over to the cloud native trail map. And this provides an overview for enterprises starting their cloud native journey. It's a recommended process for leveraging open source cloud native technologies. And at each step, the trail map highlights options, either open source, do it yourself options or vendor supported. And you can also find this trail map online on cncf.io. So Caitlin, Last but not the, least. Yes, the last and not least, number six. We made it to how you guys can now get involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we wanted to highlight as we close with opportunities to engage uh, not only with CNCF, but also in general, the community at large. So we'd love to see you um, contribute to a project, come to a CNCF event. Uh, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con is one of the largest open source uh, conferences of its kind take a training, get certified, uh, join one of our, join the end user community or one of our special interest groups um, and, or working group. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, I hope this helped you take away the six things that you needed to know about cloud native and how it impacts your life. Yes, so feel free to reach out. You can email Caitlin and myself, uh, D DM us on Twitter. Feel free to ask any questions. We'll be happy to help point you in the direction of any kind of information that you're looking for. And stay healthy. Pet your dogs. You too, Caitlin. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.